Hi there, I'm Stu and welcome to the first in our three part video series. What I'd like to do now is just jump onto the computer and we'll get started. So here we are on video one and in video one of our 17 secret ingredients to your sales recipe for success I'd like to talk to you about sales call preparation. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about these five secret ingredients, and they're all absolutely key to ensuring that you or your sales team or anybody that's talking to a customer is, gives you themselves or yourself the greatest opportunity of closing the deal. And these are really, really important. So first of all, we're going to talk about know your product. Then a little bit about know your customer. Then a little bit about know the objections that you might get in a sales situation. Then case studies and a little bit about mindset, which is absolutely key also. So, okay, ingredient number one is know your product. So what do I mean by know your product? It's saying, it sounds fairly obvious that yes, you should know the product you're selling. But believe me, I've worked with lots of sales teams and um, lots of sales people that have gone out there into their marketplace and talk to customers and they've basically winged it and this is a real no-no and don't let salespeople fool you because I know I've worked with them they want to get out on the road they want to earn their commission uh, they want to get some sales in and they don't actually know the product what they end up doing is selling something that you might not be able to deliver miss selling etc so this is really really key now what I've really found here is to ensure that your sales team know the product is to give lots of training. Um, we, we train more or less every day if we can, at least a couple of times a week, and it's just that reinforcement all the time. I go into rooms now with people and we chat. I learn something. I don't know it all. I learn something every day. So training is absolutely key. Now make it fun. You know, boring training, your sales guys are going to fall asleep. So yes, we might have to do some role play, and, people, and some sales guys don't like doing role play, but it is the only way that you know that they will know the product, because you're going to test them. Okay, give them a test at the end. Make them take a written test, and then um, review. So how do you review them? You might have to go on a sales, sales call with them. Review their training. If they don't pass the test, they actually get taken off the road. We've done that in the past. Myself, Rob and Chris have all worked in a company where we used to take our sales consultants off the road. We would rather have them a day in the office training and doing role play and testing their knowledge before they went out than them going on the road. At first I thought that was wasted time, but actually in the long run you'll be surprised. You know, take them off the road, train them. Um, it is absolutely imperative to know your product inside out with a passion. Okay, so that's ingredient number one. Now, ingredient number two, know your customer. Again, extremely important. Lots of salespeople wing it. There's no preparation whatsoever. There's no due diligence. Okay, how do you know that they're going to see a customer that is right for your product? So the first point here on this slide is actually qualify them. You should have some questions that your sales team or your telemarketers or whatever need to ask your customer before you even um, commit to seeing them because it's time, time's money. Your sales guys are out there, they've got expensive cars or whatever and they're driving around, they get to an appointment, oh dearie me, the customer's wrong for you. It's, it's absolutely imperative that you qualify your customers. So are they the right fit for you? Are they the right size? Um, are they in the right industry? Okay, really important. So do a background check as well. Um, and there's a couple of ways of doing it here. You've got website and you've got social media. It's not difficult now to do that due diligence. Due diligence, <laughs> due diligence it's easy for me to say. Um, but, but the website tells you a lot about a customer. Yes, some co websites shout about them quite, quite a lot, but you will be able to delve a little bit deeper. Some have pictures of their um, staff on. Okay, get the, the person's name and the decision maker that you're going to see, have a look at them on social media. What are their likes? What are their dislikes? What are their hobbies? 
You know, it's those sorts of things that once you get in front of a customer, you can start building really good rapport. Rapport's key as well. It's another ingredient. It's not on here, so I've thrown that one in for free. But hey, um, have a look at their competitors, because then you can have a look at what their competitors are doing. You throw something in that they think, you know, you've done your due deal about something that their competitors are doing, they suddenly start to think, you know, yeah, maybe we should um, listen to these people, because they know what's going on. So please spend some time checking out your customers, ensure they're right, and then have a look at them and know something about them before you go in, okay, preparation. Right, so now we're on to know the objections, okay, um, everybody has objections, most actually are probably just queries or something in the sales conversation that you haven't been able to answer properly for that particular customer, so it's really key here that you know what are your top 10? So ask, ask the, 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 your sales guys, you know, what are the top 10 um, questions you're always getting out there? List them down, have a look at them. Now what, a good way of doing this here on bullet point number two is what happened in your last five appointments? Sit down with your sales team or yourself and, and just think and how did that presentation go and what sort of questions were you getting? Um, and, and these are all um, little things that, that, might, that, that your customer's not sure about, and if they're not sure about something, they're going to either fob you off or, or literally go with somebody that absolutely gives them clarity about what they're going to get from, from th that particular supplier. So what happened in your last five appointments? How many questions did you get? What objections? Now, how do you answer them then? Work that out. You have to spend some time. Do the hard work up front to make the selling easy. Okay, well, a good little tip here is to ask your current customers, you know, ask them why they use you, why they made the decision to use you in the first place, and what sort of um, queries did they have that, that you overcame, and again, that will give you some idea of what you need to know to go in, <clears throat> absolutely um, smash the deal on the day, and don't just pay lip service to them, so here, practice them, day in, day out, good salespeople, um, you know, we'll do it in the car on the way or just sit outside the appointment for four or five minutes just, just saying, right, these are objections, this is how I overcome them. They have to roll off the tongue and they have to be believable. So, <clears throat> so know your objections, okay, so you don't get stuck, you're prepared. Right, here, um, case studies, really, really important. And the first bullet point here is have specific case studies. So you might go to two or three different types of industries, um, and if you've done business with that particular type of industry before, ensure that you have a case study about them. Okay. Now again, just following on from the last slide, how to be really clever to, uh, how, and how to come over, overcome objections is have a case study that overcomes a particular objection that you might be getting from that customer. Um, so something in, in, the, in the conversation, in the sales pitch, it goes something like, I'm glad you've asked me that question. I understand how you feel. I've spoken to a lot of companies who are in the same situation. And however, once they've found that you do blah, 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 um, you know, they're, they're, they've almost, it, it just hasn't become an objection whatsoever and um, they've been able to use the product and get loads of sales, etc. But then say, actually, I have a case study here. Would you like to read it? Wow, that's brilliant because it's social proof then that actually you know what you're talking about and you've, you've really backed it up. So the case studies are really, really important. Similar experiences, ensure that, again, it's a bit like specific. So what sort of um, company is it? is it? What size is it? Ensure that you know, if you're going into a two-man band and you've got a case study for a multi-million pound business, it's not quite right. Again, so match the information you're giving to the customer. And obviously, you've done that in your due diligence because you're prepared. So that's awesome. Um, ensures some sort of connection with, with, the, uh, with the business, with the type of person that you're dealing with. So if it's a production manager, make sure there's the testimonials, for, um, sorry, the case studies from a production manager. If it's a financial director, ensure that it's from the financial director. And here at the bottom, just to um, you know, summarize that really, it's the understanding that you've got um, of that customer and you're giving them the relevant information to to help them out so so case studies are really really key okay um, the last ingredient I have for you here in this first video is about mindset okay um, and here I have a little quote here if you think you can or you think you can't then you're probably right 
Okay, so it's all in the mind. If you think you can do it, you've got to set yourself up mentally to go into that appointment. You're going to get that sale, you're going to get that sale. If you go in with that mentality, then you are more and more likely to get the sale because you've got yourself in the frame of mind to do it. If there's anything negative bugging you before you go in, do you know what, you may as well um, turn back the car on, put the engine back on and head back down the motorway because you're going to put yourself in a really, really... Um, a bad situation really because you, you're just not going to go in. All that preparation is going to be a total waste of time. So get yourself in the mood for an appointment and I don't care what it is that you do to get yourself in the mood. You might have a favourite song, play it as loud as you can on the radio on the way just as you're turning the corner into the appointment. Get yourself going. I do that. I play a lot of sport. Um, on the way to a game I always play my favourite song as I did when I was going to do a sale. Um, favourite shirt. Okay, but um, you, you, you get, the, you get what, what I'm trying to say. It might be, you know, people in, uh, if you wear a suit, you know, they say that the, the red tie is the power tie. Um, so that, that looks good. It gives you the, the, the impression, you know. And, and on that, actually, um, just very quickly, depending on what you sell, is, is, it's very important how you dress. Very um, important that you dress like the person you're going to meet. So if it is a production manager on the shop floor, it might be a bit more casual. If it is the FD, then it's probably a suit with or without a tie, depending on how you, how you feel. So, um, so mindset is absolutely key. And again, you can probably do that when you train and you train, train your sales team. You know, you need to train that in as well. And all these little things all add up. They're all ingredients into the bigger picture, the bigger picture of um, a successful sales recipe. And that's what we try and give you here at the CRS Sales Academy. So, um, so that's um, hopefully set you up and given you some little um, these secret ingredients now are, are aimed that you can go and implement immediately in your business. So there's, there'll be a few there that you can take, I'm sure. You know, you've learnt it today. Go and implement it tomorrow in your business. And um, look out for video number two. Uh, I won't tell you what it's about. I don't want to spoil it, because, but it's a cracker. So look out for video number two coming into your inbox, um, hopefully, tomorrow. So um, thanks very much, and I'll speak to you soon.